Welcome to DeFine, the podcast making the most important projects in DeFi easy to understand and accessible to all. This week, we have Ben and Kila from Chidao, an open source and non-custodial stable protocol for extracting value out of priced assets. So thanks for coming on. Do we refer to you as my finance or Kidao? Well, I, I would say I would say it's Chidao, right? Uh, it's a uh, Chinese. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, no worries. So Chidao Protocol is like the back end, think MakerDAO. And then mm-hmm. the front end is my finance, think Oasis, right? So when we're talking to normies, we usually say my finance because that's what they're gonna see on the URL. Um, but for a lot of the people that are involved in the protocol, you know, involved in the DAO, they refer to us as Chidao. Makes things uh, confusing sometimes. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. You're not the best with the naming. Uh, no, naming dude, right. we go up to somebody and we're like, yeah, we cheat out. And they're like, cool. And then they search up C-H-E-E now, or you say, we're my finance. And they're like, cool, M-Y finance. So. All right, got it. Okay, so back end and kind of back end and front end, basically, right? Right. And so just like backing up a bit, how did you guys get here working on cheat out? Maybe Ben, do you want to? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, it's a, a long road that led us to to working at Chidao. Um, a lot of us met through hackathons and, you know, working. Uh, Kila does, uh, did a lot of, like, planning of hackathons. And then me and, like, other, other people in the team would always, like, participate. We've been in crypto for a while now. And I think we all agreed that as this whole cross-chain narrative started to build out, every chain is going to need a stable coin, right? And a native stable coin, not just bridging stable coins. So that's kind of where we we came about. So, like, Ben, how did you personally get into the space, into into crypto? I got into crypto because my brother, like, always talked to me about crypto. Uh, mm-hmm. My background's thinking, like, traditional finance. But, like, you know, at some point, you know, if, if you believe enough in the narrative from DeFi, uh, you know, accessibility of, of, of financial systems and all that, you eventually have to move, right? Um, mm-hmm. You eventually have to make the switch to, like, kind of reconcile with values. So that's kind of how I got into it. What about you, Kiva? Yeah, I got into it through hackathons. I um, I used to go to a ton of ton of hackathons through through university. I went to one, and uh, there was a company that had a blockchain project or blockchain challenge. Uh, did that? That was kind of my my first introduction into the space. Really loved it, um, and then kind of just continued to uh, continue to learn more. I used to produce hackathons as well, did quite a few blockchain hackathons. That's where I met uh, a lot of the teammates here. And yeah, just continued to unwisely throw a bunch of money into into crypto throughout the years and um, learn more. And that's really just how it kind of started. And are, are, are both of you guys technical? I mean, are you, are you both developers? So none of us are developers like at Cheetah, but I'd say everyone at Cheetah is pretty technical. When, when he says none of us are developers at Cheetah, and he means like him and myself, there's we have developers. Hey, we, we have developers. <laughs> right, right. I was just thinking, how does this work? This is a real DAO. <laughs> uh, so my, my background is mathematics and physics, and then Benjamin, uh, finance and economics and all that kind of good stuff so no those are backgrounds but yeah we do have uh, we do have devs at uh, cheetah amazing how did you form the dao how did you form this um with your you know with the developers that you have <laughs> yeah i mean there are like core things that we needed to get done right like you know the developers do a lot of uh actually making the protocol right mm-hmm. um you know we also have a lot of like overlaps right because it's not just about coding Right, it's about developing the overarching like protocol, right? How are you going to structure this DAO? How are you going to structure the different economic systems? And they work together. And so a lot of us just do a lot of this. And now as we started to get bigger, we started to add people from the community to do specific things like marketing, like, um, I don't know, like community management. And so that's kind of how the DAO started to develop itself is mm-hmm. kind of like, where a lot of the initial people have like a lot of like different things that we do. We started to break that out into more people. Yeah. Yeah. It, the community aspect, I mean, has been great from the start. I think since, since we launched, uh, we've had really educated, um, caring community that really, really knows what we're doing, gives really great feedback on it, um, provides help wherever they can. I, I mean, at the beginning, we were shocked with 
how much people were doing without us even asking for it. Right. You know, uh, we have community members that created a entire like strategy education, you know, no website and everything like that, that has a bunch of different strategies that you can follow how to guides. Um, we didn't ask for it. They just, you know, decided that they wanted to create it. Um, mm -hmm. really, really beautiful. And that, that ethos and that spirit within the DAO has continued to grow, even though that we've, you know, as we've grown and had more and more people from, you know, different communities come and join, uh, we haven't really lost that, that community aspect. I can see that you have, you know, defined yourself as an open source and non-custodial stable protocol for extracting value out of pr priced assets. How, how would you define that? I guess open source, non-custodial is something that people in crypto are pretty familiar with, right? Open source, anyone can see our code. Non-custodial, we don't touch your money, right? Like if you put any collateral into Chirao, you know, the team can't do anything with it. Um, everybody has their money in like these NFTs that represent the debt that you have in our, in our system. And then I think the, the most important part is extracting value out of price assets, right? So we let you mint stable coins against a wide variety of like tokens, right? Like CRV, like um, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. Some of them even earn interest while they they are in our platform, and so that, that gives you a lot of flexibility because a lot of people have what's called seller's remorse, right? Um, you have a bunch of BTC, you don't want to spend it, right? But everybody's got to pay rent, <laughs> so do you sell it or what do you do? I mean, you can borrow against it, but borrowing stable coins uh, and like Aave is really expensive. You're talking mm -hmm. 15, 16, 17% APY. Uh, we don't charge anything. And so that's a pretty big difference. So like, is, is that, you know, is that the, the product market fit you were hoping to achieve? Is that you saw apps like Aave early on and said, you know, there could be a better way? I think we looked at a lot of projects. Not right. just how I mean, we looked at liquidity, we looked at MakerDAO, which mm -hmm. we looked up to. Um, we, we looked at so many different things. Yeah, and we're just trying to pull kind of pull the best bits out of a bunch of things. A lot, you know, like like he said, we looked up to Maker uh, kind of from the get go, but it was very expensive. Like for for most of for most of us, for a lot of people in DeFi, it's it was too expensive to borrow against you know, borrow small amounts of money. You had to do at least, you know, 10K for it to make it, or to make it, you know, reasonable. Because of gas fees? Yeah, because of gas yeah. fees. And so we wanted to, you know, we wanted to find a a happy medium of being able to have that same, you know, that same feeling, that same ability, uh, the same services, but on a more accessible basis for anyone in DeFi. So cheaper chains, uh, zero percent interest, more collateral types. Um, yeah. And so, correct me if I'm wrong. You guys kind of initially launched on Polygon, right? We, we were initially like the Polygon stable coin, and that was kind of our thing. But mm -hmm. as this cross chain narrative started to like pick up, we were like, you know what? Let's let's go to the other chains as well, because a lot of these chains are very underdeveloped, right? Like you'll have a Dex and a yield aggregator, and that's that's it. And so from like a strategic perspective, you know, it makes sense to be there. So now we're, I mean, you can bridge my today to 17 chains and you can mint my in like five, pretty, pretty cross chain at the moment. I mean, it's, it's actually very cross chain. If you try and, if you try and move your USDC around to different chains, you're not going to be able to. It's one, either they like, there's no bridge over to uh, that exotic chain or there's no liquidity. Or even worse, you have... USDC like wormhole, USDC Allbridge, USDC AQ plus Y, something like some random long name, which is awful because then you have fractionalized liquidity. With my, you can take it anywhere. Like you can go from Aurora to Boba to Moon River, and it's going to be the same. Incredible. You know, I think we've kind of defined there what the open source and non-custodial stable protocol component is. But like, essentially, if you were to give like a one a one-liner, it would be like zero interest crypto lending, right? Yeah, essentially. Yeah. So like, how do you, why are you guys excited about this? And what do you think, you know, what are the possibilities for zero interest crypto lending? Yeah, I mean, I think what's pretty awesome is that, you know, traditionally people charge you like in CDPs, right? To mint stable coins, which is really weird because nobody's lending you that money right? It's, it's literally your money that you're printing 
against the value of tokens that you hold. And so why would you be charged interest for it? Um, and so this idea that anybody could, um, you know, be in charge of creating liquidity in, in crypto, I think is pretty awesome. It's kind of like, kind of like the Fed today, how they print money. Maybe, maybe they print it like, uh, you know, so responsibly. Uh, and so not having it with the rules of crypto, I think is very compelling. What applications of this are you guys thinking will be around in the future? Well, I mean, again, it just, it gives people, it gives people access to like the value that they already have in their crypto. I mean, I just, the other day I had a buddy of mine, he's got a ton of crypto. He's been in the game for, for a long time, sitting on a bunch of PC. Um, he's looking to buy a house and right. he, I mean, he didn't want to sell his, he didn't want to sell his crypto. Uh, so he looked, looked towards my finance because Again, he gets to keep his BTC, gets to take a stablecoin loan against it. The debt will never increase because it's zero percent interest. Um, his BTC, he's got faith in it that it will continue to go up. And now he gets to, you know, now he gets a home um, where he doesn't have to pay any kind of mortgage, um, doesn't have to pay mortgage or anything along those lines. And even his BTC, he put it into, um, he put it into, I think. Ave to get some kind of return on it as well. So as BTC is growing all, all the meanwhile, yeah, those, those are some, I mean, that may be an extreme case, but again, like Benjamin said, people have rent to pay. People have things that they want to do with, uh, with the value of their crypto, but they just weren't able to do it. Now we're giving them a very cheap um, and accessible opportunity or way to do that. Yeah. And even in like places where, I mean, a lot of people say there's not a lot of low income people in crypto, because low-income people are not yeah. saving money. Well, this could be a way of having saving some money, right? Because uh, in essence, you're spending your money without having to spend it, spend it. Yeah. And so a lot of people could find this like as a solution, right? Like mm -hmm. I'll save in BTC, I'll save in like uh, interest-bearing DAI or something, and then I'll spend my. And so it could be an avenue for people to build up their savings. Okay, and so like practically, your Akilo, your your friend taking out a essentially a mortgage. What were the steps for him to get BTC onto the protocol and to to cash out the the mine? Yeah, yeah, it was it was quite quite simple. So I mean, if you just if you just have you know regular tokens, he, he's on Phantom, so he's very very big on on the Phantom chain. So he had his BTC on Phantom. What yeah, what what he did, he just went ahead deposited his BTC into into my finance. Then he took out a loan. I think it was maybe around like 200. No, it wasn't 200. It was like 300% CDR. Took out a loan. Basically, you have a borrow button on my finance. You click the borrow button. You decide how much how much you want to borrow based off of the value of the BTC that he's got. Took out that took out that loan. Took it out in my then he took that my he turned it into i think usdt uh sent it over to his binance account binance straight into his bank account and then there you go you've got your cash i mean are you are you hoping that as the as my is adopted that that step will be skipped right like you won't have to yes. convert from my to usdt yeah 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 correct correct i mean that's that's the goal but i mean i think we're like we're pretty close mm -hmm. i mean we already have a credit card that takes my Jewel, really? jewel card, yeah, on on Phantom. Is that J double O L? It's J U L, uh, oh. J U L card. Yeah, yeah. And so they launched, I think, in January, right, Kila? Hmm. Yeah, they launched. They launched their uh, their beta in January. I think like their their big launch is coming up here pretty pretty quickly. So it's a Visa card. So yeah. I mean, wherever wherever you want to mm -hmm. spend it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, the steps for that, you take your whatever token you take your interest bearing phantom you throw it in mm -hmm. you mint some mint some my you send it over to the the account your credit card account spend whatever you want and you're good you know there's no um time horizon that you have to think about for repaying this debt no it's zero awesome. interest right it's, so you know it's up to it's up to you i mean do keep an eye on the volatility of the market and you know in case in case you're bar if you're borrowing too much, you know, you could get partially liquidated. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, and if you're staying within a healthy range, it's zero percent interest. So hold it for as long as you want. So you guys, when did you push this product live? We went live on May first of 2020, okay. 2021. So eight, nine months, something like that. 
Yeah. So, I mean, this is like a, a pretty huge value proposition, like zero interest le- uh, lending, right? Like surely that's a, that's like a holy grail. Like why do you think that, I mean, what have you seen in terms of like the adoption rate or the reception from the, the wider community for this product so far? I think it's been pretty positive. I, I think we haven't seen like an insane like like exponential like growth in TVL. I mean, we've had pretty consistent growth in TVL since mm-hmm. we started, and that's just because we don't believe in relying on like unreasonable emissions. I think what you see with a lot of stable coins today is that they prop up their growth by just minting a bunch of their token. But that can get complicated, right? Because next bear market, you know what happens when everybody starts selling your stable coin because Mm -hmm. the APR is not uh, crazy, right? And so what we've done is, you know, we've really created a web of allies of uh, friendly projects, right, in different chains that um, will incentivize my, and then in exchange, you know, we'll give them assets, their assets, access to liquidity by adding them as collateral. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, just on the on on that front, like, you know, sort of bird's eye view, like, how how does your business model differentiate itself from or ensure it's sustainable? Like, comparing, say, some of those more established projects you mentioned, Ave and so forth. Where do you see the biggest differences in in the business model? Right. I think we make our bucks when there is volatility. Right. Because uh, we make money when people are buy, like repaying their loans because we charge a 0.5% repayment fee. And so when those like adjustments happen, that's when we make money. So you're saying, for instance, when B- the price of BTC or ETH drops by 20%, then everyone goes, oh, shit, I better pay back my, my, my debt. Or at least a little bit, right? They try to play around with their collateral to debt ratio to mm-hmm. make sure that they're not partially liquidated. So yeah, there, there's that part, but then also we do have the vault incentives um, that we have, which now move around from collateral to collateral based off of community vote. And so what we've started to see as well is people moving their collateral from, you know, a a vault that has high incentives this for like these two weeks to another one that will have high incentives for the next two weeks. I think yeah, when you were saying what the, what the difference are between us and say Ave. Again, you have zero percent interest. You have the the vast amount of collaterals that you can borrow against interest bearing ones as well. The uh, the different chains that we're on. Yeah, and also it's like Ave is a pure lending market, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody's lending you money, you're borrowing that money. Um, we are more akin to MakerDAO because you're printing money, right? Mm-hmm. That's the value of your assets. And so there's no counterpart party. Uh, and also everything's segregated. There's not a pool of tokens that people are borrowing against. Uh, and so if anything happens to like CRV vaults, that's not going to touch at all the other mm-hmm. vaults, right? Mm. That's super interesting. And it's so like, like, it, like um, collateral to collateral, but also user to user. Like what are the typical um, collateral to debt ratios? I mean, that's... It varies, right? Because we have 40 collaterals. But for, I guess, the big gas tokens like WEF, you know, we require a minimum collateralization of 135 or 130%. But most people hang around the 200 range. That's kind of like what's mostly seen. Yeah. Uh, and also, when I did mention the vault incentives, we have a range where you get those vault incentives if you stay within you know, a certain range. And so that's usually where we see most people. So that 250-ish range. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, how do, like how what's the process for for the platform adding new um, collateral types? Yeah, it's pretty simple. So sometimes you know we'll show it to the DAO. Sometimes other people will come to the DAO with proposals. But basically, it's always going to be a DAO uh, mm-hmm. vote, and so we'll vote on adding it as well as what the collateral to debt ratio is. So, for example, right now we received a proposal from Celsius, and they mm-hmm. want to add some of their wrapped assets like uh, ETH um, as collateral. And so in the proposal, they ask as well as any inducements they're going to give to, uh, sorry, my dogs are, are barking. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, as, as well as any kind of like inducements. So they're going to be providing liquidity for my, or they might be giving different incentives. Uh, one thing I do want to add is that 
to be added as collateral in our vaults, you do need a chain link oracle. And so that's that's a requirement there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So Celsius, that would be a pretty a pretty major partner for you guys, right? I mean, they have pretty a couple huge. more than a billion. Thirty billion. Uh, pretty huge. Uh, they are looking to kind of move a lot of their users into DeFi because mm. that's where you really see the yield uh, being generated. And so we're partnering with them initially in Polygon, but it looks to be like there's going to be a pretty cross-chain partnership with them. I mean, it's huge for us. That's like 60 million bucks going into our TVL, and that's just on Polygon, right? I think mm. as a lot of these CeFi companies start to get more users, they're going to need to move into DeFi, like the real blockchain stuff, right? And I mean, like, have there been any major stress tests for the protocol so far? A bunch. I mean, Black Swan in in uh, May, there was like a huge crash in September. Mm-hmm. Last week, uh, Ethereum wanted to half and keep halving. So, uh, <laughs> but our peg is fine. I mean, it didn't move at all. I and mean, liquidations worked like they were supposed to work. And that's kind yeah, of why we yeah. use Chainlink Oracles, right? When things turn dark, I think, you know, things need to still keep running and they have. Yeah, I mean, have you seen any kind of, I mean, what have been the most, have you had any issues in terms of liquidations or functionality? Not at all. No. Not at all. I mean, functionality, everything has been good. In terms of liquidations, we, we need to have liquidations and we need to have liquidators to make sure that, you know, my always, sorry? Oh, we are making sure they make money, right? Well, yeah, making sure that they make money and making sure that my is always over collateralized. And so, yeah, we've, we haven't had any issues with uh, liquidations or functionality. Mm. Yeah, I mean, like, do you guys have a threshold for, like, a collateral type? Like, w- how liquid does it need to be? Because, I mean, that would be problematic, right? If you had some yeah. illiquid Bitcoin that <laughs> was backing all this mine. Yeah, well, we do yeah. have a bunch of, like, different levers that we need to check. Um, liquidity is very important. I mean, to get a Chainlink Oracle, you have to have 2 to $4 million of mm-hmm. 24 hour volume. But that's just aggregate. So on top of that, we look at every chain that that collateral is on, and mm-hmm. we make sure that if today um, all of those vaults were to be liquidated, can they be liquidated at a slippage that is lower than the amount of than the percentage of money that the liquidators would get? Right. Mm-hmm. If you're making ten percent on the liquidation, but the slippage is twelve percent, you're gonna lose money. And so that's another thing that we look at. Interesting. So I just I just had another. Um question with regards to like the so my okay my is solely on polygon is that correct no no so you can mint my on avalanche polygon phantom harmony and moon river but then you can bridge it to 17 chains okay wow so yeah i mean i guess my question there was going to be you know for instance can you have your collateral on one chain but then mint your my on another chain not yet we're, not yet. Uh, not okay. yet. Jumping the gun, but that's an ambition. Correct. I mean, I suppose that's probably quite a challenging thing to take on, right? Like for several reasons, like technically speaking. I mean, yeah, for liquidations, right? You're going to liquidate on one and then get the collateral token on another. Hmm. Uh, it depends on what blockchains you're on. I don't want to give more alpha than that, but uh, it's just uh, there's a lot you can play around with. I mean, so like what right now, um, what's the sort of breakdown across chains in terms of like where's the bulk of your liquidity coming from? Yeah, so I think right now we have the most of it on Phantom. We have ICBO on Phantom followed by Polygon. And wow, then- so the bulk's on Phantom, not Polygon. Well, Phantom has been a very nice ally and like they've helped us a lot to scale. And so naturally, you know, we've grown a lot there. But then most of our liquidity is still on Polygon, um, like where the MAI actually sits. So what mm-hmm. people do is they'll borrow on one chain, uh, MAI, and then they'll take it across the different chains to find the best yield. Because we have a, a bunch of farms. Like we have over 30 farms and like 25 of them are not like our farms. They're like other people that are incentivizing MAI. So it's kind of nice to go around the different chains and find pretty high APR. Like it's a huge value proposition. I'm just wondering, like, what do you think is going to be the pathway to, like, do you see that eventually when enough people realize that they can borrow at 0% interest on pretty much any L2 they want, how do you see yourselves getting there? 
And will you be in the process? Will you be taking liquidity away from your Aves and whatnot? We're definitely not going to take liquidity from Aave, but I'll, I'll let I like Kila touch up on that. Yeah, in terms mm-hmm. of like taking liquidity away from Aave, no, we won't because we like to. I mean, we like to kind of play these pieces of the of the Lego money Lego. So we take a lot of Aave receipt tokens as as collateral for you to be able to mint against. So people, if they're smart, they will throw their money into Aave, earn some interest on it, for example, and then use that receipt token to uh, to borrow stable coins against that zero percent interest. So we're not really taking any uh, liquidity away from uh, from Aave. In in terms of what sorry, what was the second question or like the um I guess just around like what's the what's the pathway to, to getting there, to getting more people using the protocol. Right. I, I think a big piece of that is just having deeper liquidity. For yeah. us, we haven't really seen a lack of demand for borrowing. We've like our debt ceilings are hit consistently. Um, but we want to make sure that our peg is solid and strong and we do not destroy it. And so we keep mm-hmm. Like we have these debt ceilings to prevent that. And so as we start to get deeper and deeper liquidity, we'll be able to increase those debt ceilings at a faster rate, which then we'll start seeing more and more people um, borrowing my against, uh, against mm. their capital. Presumably, you know, part of the picture is is just longevity, right? Like I feel like the longer you guys can prove that your engine works and everything, and the more prevalent my is on different venues and stuff and people are going to have more confidence, right? Yeah. Giving people confidence, um, mm-hmm. building, building strong allies. Yeah. That's, that's a huge piece of it. So, I mean, for example, just the Celsius piece. Now, if people are seeing that Celsius uses, uses my to mint or uses, you know, cheat out to mint uh, stable coins, I think that will go a long way in giving people confidence. We're like, Oh, well, if Celsius, a, a large, large CFI company is doing it, you know, they got to be doing something right. And they're not the they're not going to be the last CFI company we integrate with. I mean, just so in Q1 this year we have two more coming, so I think Ooh. that's going to be a big one. Uh, we can't say yet who, uh, because like the terms are still being finalized. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's going to be pretty big for us because you see a lot of other CDPs like I look at MakerDAO. Like most of their vaults are like I mean most of the TVL is like four or five vaults, and they're like large CFI companies. So that's a, a big part of how they increase. We also do have a lot of like a grassroots movement going across the different chains. Like if you go to any chain, chances are that we've partnered with at least the top three uh, projects. I think that's going to be very good for longevity because you kind of uh, diversify in your partnerships instead of having right. it so centralized. I mean, another big trend you see in CDPs, uh, stable coins, is that you'll have, I don't know, two, three billionaires, right? that get together and they dump in a lot of TVL. And that's how they are able to grow, right? That's kind of dangerous because then you get into a lot of politi- political games um, to try to, you know, make more friends or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just have a bunch of projects behind us. And I think that's stronger. Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking, as you said that, I was just thinking maybe not billionaires per se, but was it the other week with Mim when like Alameda had like 500 million or something in the in the, in the pool on Curve and just like, <laughs> Just pulled, everyone was like, oh my God, they just pulled out like. <laughs> I mean, you know. it goes to show. I mean, are you building uh, a truly decentralized system? Mm. Or is it just a bunch of rich people getting together, you know? Yeah, it's, it's hard to maintain that, the ideology, isn't it? Like, and I guess like to your point, you know, diversification in, in terms of who you're working with is pretty important. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a super cool proposition, right? Like, I mean, for us at Stakedow, you know, like, I mean, it's early days, right? But having your your stable coins locked in our protocol, earning interest, and then borrowing against that, uh, I mean... It's pretty nice. <laughs> it's, it's pretty yeah. nice. So, like, presumably with, like, Celsius, for example, would it be the, a similar architecture? With Celsius, it's a bit different because with them, they actually control, like, all their TVL. Like, so they're 32 mm-hmm. bill. That's asset under management. Now, that is insane, eh? Like, so that literally they could just plop, put it in there. Um, yeah. and so it's a bit different for us. Uh, I think a big... Right, so they're controlling the user, user funds. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, what returns they get, you know, what they do with the MI is different, right? We mm-hmm. couldn't go up to like, um, I don't know, like a balancer and give them like a $30 million debt ceiling. 
right? Because then they'll just print 30 million my and then dump it all because it's a bunch of users. But mm -hmm. if you go up to like a like a specific partner and then say, you know, okay, what are you going to do with my? Okay, you're going to provide liquidity? Cool. Um, I mean, with Frax, we did that last week where they put in 4 million FXS into our vaults. They minted 2 million my. Mm -hmm. uh, put that together with Frax and now Polygon is going to incentivize that pool. Um, and so we get a little more flexibility when they are actually controlling the assets. That's probably one of the biggest challenges for you guys is is kind of monitoring or balancing the actual distribution of my right. Right. It's all a liquidity game, you know. Like, mm -hmm. are, are you? Do you have enough sinks to sustain people buying and selling my? If you do, mm -hmm. it can keep increasing the um, like the debt ceilings. Otherwise, I mean, like, if you end up having like a bunch of stables that are all incentivized by you that's not going to last long term unless you're making enough money. I mean, I don't know if you noticed what happened with UST uh, a couple of weeks ago when Luna started lowering in price, right? And so then people are like, okay, maybe I should take my money out of Anchor, right? Mm -hmm. But as you know, if enough people take it out, I think it was like 4%. If like 4% of people take out their money from Anchor, UST's uh, peg just, it gets destroyed. Um, and so that paints a, a new picture, right? Um, how can you maintain this long term without you being the one incentivizing it? Yeah, and like, how do you how do you see that scaling for you guys? Partnerships. Partnerships. I mean, yeah. you have a hundred people incentivizing two percent of of my supply, mm -hmm. right? That's way better than three mm -hmm. people doing it. Correct. I mean, also, what we'll probably start seeing, like going in the future. I don't know if you you were um, following the the Phantom so like Solidity Wars. Um, where a mm -hmm. bunch of projects were trying to get TVLs, things along those lines. I mean, mm -hmm. we'll probably start seeing that on more and more chains. And I mean, for us, if we can, you know, if we can have other people subsidizing, you know, liquidity, as it, like right now, that's uh, that's where we're gonna be able to kind of keep this thing going long term. Mm -hmm. But it's a back and forth, right? Like, look at Celsius. Like, they're not gonna start a huge MyOP because they love starting LPs, right? It's because we're mm -hmm. taking their tokens as collateral, right? Pangolin, for example, they're opening up a farm um, for my in Avalanche because we're taking a lot of their assets um, into like a lending market that we started uh, with Market XYZ. So, you know, you have to just play the game of, you know, scoring different partnerships. Mm. Yeah, on that, on that front, like, what are you guys mostly focused on day to day, like personally? Uh, we have a pretty wide range of things that we do. I mean, Kila, what 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 do we focus on? I, I mean, a, a big piece, like a big piece is is those partnerships. We try and you know we try and solidify those solidify those relationships, spark up new you know new partnerships there. Figure out different strategies that we can that we can use with those with those partners. I mean, we also uh, we'll also do marketing. We'll do uh, testing. Oh, <laughs> you know, HR. It's it's a small team, so we we wear a bunch of different hats. But the the big pieces for us is is like how can we you know how can we deepen that liquidity? How can we get you know, more TVL and then also mm -hmm. more, more revenue. For yeah. The also a lot of reading. We spend a, a pretty, pretty good percentage of our time just seeing what's up. Like what, what are people building? What are they not building? Mm -hmm. Like analyzing the numbers, like where's the liquidity moving across the chains? Why is it moving? Mm -hmm. That's very important. I mean, that's kind of like most of the time. Yeah. That, and what, so how many of there are you at, at the Dow? Oof, I mean, at the Dow, like we have so many contributors. Like, I think we have at least twenty uh, mm -hmm. contributors, people mm -hmm. that are like they do different things. Like, maybe they write articles, maybe they manage the Discord stuff like that. Full timers, we're up to seven now, Kila. Right? It's eight actually, eight. We sent yeah. one more. Yeah, and you guys were one of the early ones, I'm guessing. Yeah, we're one of the early ones. Yeah. What are you guys thinking are going to be some of as as a like as a multi chain project with cross chain functionality or amb ambitions? What 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 are gonna what are some of the challenges there? I mean, naturally, like one challenge is making sure that there's very low amount of friction between mm. the different chains, right? Mm -hmm. Like we don't want to silo any of our deployments, and so I mean, EC is going to be, of course, like the like the bridging. 
but I think long term we need to come up with some more advanced like cross chain messaging systems. So things like boosting, things like uh, like rewards, like booster rewards as well, like voting, all that stuff is going to be very important. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we've done a little bit of that already. Like you can vote from Phantom and Polygon, but there's a lot of room uh, to improve. Yes, for sure. I, I, um, I guess I, I kind of just had another more like philosophical question. Like, do you think that there are any risks to zero interest lending in terms of like, do you think that it could be more conducive to creating a, a sort of derivatives bubble? Mm, of having too much my? Yeah. Yeah. And th that, I mean, there's like any stable coin, their biggest liability is the stable coin, like for city mm -hmm. But I think where we differ is that we haven't gone crazy with the money printer. Like we have only allowed there to be so much my that we can sustain long, like for a long period of time. Most my today is housed by, you know, LPs that are incentivized by our partners, not by us. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's something that we need to watch uh, to make sure that it, it can, like if the market were to tank tomorrow, if there was a black swan event tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know, that's everything still work. Um, that's like a big thing. Right, right. Yeah, it makes sense. So like, you know, in, you mentioned earlier, I mean, about maybe a few kind of alphas there, but like what are some big things that you guys are excited about coming up? Uh, I mean, what do you think, Kila? I mean, new collaterals all the time, new chains. Mm -hmm. We're launching on Gnosis today, Gnosis chain, adding the stake DAO uh, vault today as well on Avalanche. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, again, yeah, the new collaterals, new chains. Uh, that's that's cool. I think we're also going to start to look at more automations and different uh, different cool strategies that you'll be able to do. Like, just for example, in the future, if you could... Uh, you could borrow, and then the the rewards that you're earning can automatically repay your debt. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you know things along those lines. I think is is pretty cool. Making it a big thing for us is also trying to make it more user friendly. Because uh, right now, a lot of times, our our a lot of energy is spent on educating people like how to use it and uh, all that good, like all that good stuff. And so, making things a little bit easier is is great. Um, I would be great partnerships that are coming up. That's, that's got me jazzed. Like everything we've done up to now pales in comparison yeah. to the two, three, four partnerships that are coming up. Really? But we're talking about easily doubling the size of Cheetah in the next wow. months. And so I'm pretty, pr pretty pumped about that. <laughs> next big, big things. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Like thinking about, you know, the, integration of like CFI into into DeFi, you know, like do you guys see that projects like yourselves are kind of like cannibalizing CFI to some degree? I think we're doing something different. I think that we're really gonna be the gateway to a lot of these CFI companies to mm. give more offerings without, you know, like having to do it themselves. I think there's a lot of different reasons why a CFI company wouldn't want to have a stable coin, wouldn't want to have lending themselves, right? But connecting their users to something like that is crucial. Like, I think long-term, these DeFi companies are going to be the next banks, right? We're going to have their, like, life savings, so people are going to pay their friends, you know, do what they do. And there's no bank if there's no lending. Mm. And so connecting to DeFi applications that can do that is going to be very important. And I think you're going to see that, like, normies are never going to have ledgers. They're never going to go to MetaMask. They're never going to do this whole like yield farming game. Like they're going to mm -hmm. go through an application that's easy to use and right. that's custodial. Like I, th I think that's the future or maybe semi-custodial. And so, yeah, I think we're going to play a big role in that. Mm. Yeah, it is kind of, it is interesting just to see, although how like wallet technology has, you know, evolved and there's still like, I feel like the the sort of legacy issue is still so prevalent hey like how do you you know when when someone dies where does their where do their funds go how, how do you manage counterparty risks blah 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 like i feel like as like a you know young guy in in, in DeFi or crypto or whatever you know it's it's easy to take that for granted today eh? 
like not everyone wants to like have a ledger with distributed backups and no, forget about it. Like <laughs> people like can about like bank uh, applications today yeah. and they're telling me you're going to tell them to use a ledger. Exactly. No, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, Kila and I maybe do a little too many of these tutorial sessions when we onboard people. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I love Ethereum. But I'm not touching Ethereum, and I'm never telling anyone to go to Ethereum because it's too expensive, right. man. Like if they were like, "Oh, I'm gonna put a hundred bucks to just try it out," I'm like, mm. fine, okay, that's like one transaction, you know? Yeah. Like I mean, maybe not one transaction, but like maybe a handful. Which is also one of the beautiful things about all of these, like all of these side chains or L2s, is that you can really test out DeFi without having to spend a shit ton of money. Like it's it's the first time where you're really able to, you know throw in like he said a hundred bucks and be able to test fucking everything out like you can test out almost every single on, on polygon you can test out every fucking dap you'll never spend a hundred dollars on polygon with hundred bucks that's that's how you learn i mean ethereum was so so difficult to get people to learn because they couldn't do it without having to spend you know a ton of money like now now it's a little bit a little bit easier you still have to get them you know on to polygon and then there's the bridging where do i withdraw to like what do i withdraw with i mean coinbase has been so slow um Mm -hmm. and like finance too right like and they can only withdraw to some places and Mm -hmm. you have to explain to them why they need to buy avax right in order to withdraw it's a lot uh yeah i mean i like the other day it was i have this like an erc20 token that i like delegated years ago and kind of forgot about it you know and like i was checking it it was like I think I generated like, there's like 500 bucks, mm. you know, to claim. And then the gas fee would be like 450 bucks. I'm just like, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> classic, classic. Yeah, I have yeah. a lot of money stuck on Ethereum. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny. Eh? Like, I think there's so, we've got so far to go in terms of like bridging, yeah, between chains, but also like, it just it blows my mind how like many centralized exchanges um, are still like super late, like super slow to to kind of to innovate there. Like you know, for example, like Binance, which is you know one of the the incumbents. You know, like they don't have stable coins on Polygon, for instance. Like it, it's just completely insane. Like they're not innovating at all. Like they're mm. making a game where people can trade tokens. Like it's not even crypto. Like think about it. It's literally just an online bank right right without actually having cash without actually having crypto so yeah, you yeah. yourself what are they spending their time doing right like at least connect to crypto at least let your people yeah. like, get in there but i think the i mean if i'm binance it's uh, also an issue right yeah you they can want to keep the liquidity on the platform exactly right i mean if you connect yeah. to a cheap like platform everyone's gonna go because why mm. would you let binance and crypto.com which very often get hacked why would you let them hold your crypto when well, you can just go to real crypto? Yeah, it's a it's a classic kind of case of the incumbent not wanting to innovate, eh? like you know your your PayPal's or or whatever, right? Or your bank your Bank of Americas or what have you, you know? Yeah, I see. I see um, you're gonna see a DeFi company come yeah. and connect people to DeFi in a way that's mm. comfortable, and that DeFi company is going to take over. They're gonna I crush, think, yeah. yeah. There's going to be a lot of like the Bank of America's pushing back. And oh, playing. yeah. And like the government. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not going to be an American company. I'll tell you that. It's not going to be a Chinese company. It's not mm. going to be a, a European company. It's going to be a company where like the government like is trying to make a change. A small, a small state nation. Nation state like, uh, yeah. what are you thinking? The Bahamas or something like that. Something like that. Mm. Cool, guys. Well, um, you know, it's been it's been a lot of fun talking to you today. I think, yeah, like the the idea of zero interest crypto lending is is such a cool one. And I'm I, like, I actually haven't tried out um, the protocol yet, but I, I definitely will be doing so. Wow! I mean, oh. was <laughs> you selling your crypto before off ramping, or what's that? What what like? Do you just sell your crypto before off ramping, or? Yeah, yeah. Trader. Trader. No, no, no. How yeah, about yeah, yeah. How you don't? Well, no, no, no. Just, just stables, just stables. Uh, just but stables. even stables, so what you can do is you can put them in stake DAO, right? Mm-hmm. Into the three curve strategy, borrow against it at zero percent interest in my finance, and off ramp that. What? Crazy. 
crazy. And we're about to vote to lower the collateral to debt ratio to 110% for stake DAO because that's okay. like necessary. I mean, it makes sense because it's a stable coin. <laughs> right. Yeah. I stake DAO, so it's pretty low risk. Yeah. Yeah, permissionless is the way to go. Like. Oh, bullish, bullish key DAO. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Well, thank, thanks a lot for coming on today, guys. Yeah, I, I definitely will try out the product and I feel bad that I, I haven't yet, but there's just, yeah, I mean, you know what it's like. There's so much going on and oh, yeah. you don't necessarily get a chance to try out everything you're working on, but thanks thanks so much for coming on and um, yeah, look forward to trying it out. Perfect. Awesome, man. Thanks for your time. <laughs>